Welcome back to The Witcher 3 Blood and Wine, where we witcher about in our brand new suit. <laughs> this looks so funny, but uh, we roll it, we roll it. It's, it's perfectly witchery. So we wanted to go to the vineyard to fetch our surprise, Belgard. Vineyard. That they promised us. I think they are in the house. What a nice place. <laughs> oh, look at that. It's them, dining outside in the sunshine. I envy them. It's not them. <laughs> it's Bon Vivant. I shall go. And two noble oh, women and I men who don't have a name. Crawling on an they are oh, up there? Did she have a baby that quickly? It was only three days. Dang, she's productive. There was nothing down there, right? It matters not that a man does fit for the sisters. Huh. Oh, Witcher, greetings. Kind of you to come. Matilda and I, we have a surprise for you. I get to name your baby? Hmm. You two seem to be getting along. We are. There came a point we realized we had no grounds to quarrel. Things became altogether pleasant. And a bit spicy. Romantic. Quite. Got it. Needn't say more. Glad things are going well for you. What's the surprise? What's the surprise? Some new monster I need to kill? No. Something far more pleasant. We've produced a wine. According to the best sommeliers, it might just dethrone SF. No we way. We owe this success to you. So, if you'd agree... We'd like to name it after you. What shall we call it? No! The Butcher of Blaviken. The White Wolf. Is it red wine or white wine? If it is red wine, the Butcher. If it is white wine, White Wolf. Right? <laughs> Let, let's call it White Wolf. Why not White Wolf? Wild, with character. It fits perfectly. At the if moment we are a pink mind, cold. We'd like to send a few bottles to your home every so often. Ooh. I'd be honored. Thanks. No, we thank you. Take care, Witcher. We got a wine supply of White Wolf. Awesome. I thank you again. And shoot your and hope the wine's to your liking. I hope so too. Remember the Camerlengo pays out a handsome reward for each hands you dispatch. Yeah, yeah. I dispatched one hands already without knowing it. That's their their standard. It's nice. Half a dragon and a lot of squares. <laughs> the square dragon. They have one of these two. Announcement from the Office of Internal Internal Revenue of the Duchy of Toussaint. Matilda Vermentino and Liam Coronato have become the new owners of Belgard Vineyard, leading to the consolidation of the lands of Mer Vermentino, Coronata and Belgard. This new ownership status takes effect as of the date of this announcement. So it's official. Awesome. <laughs> it matters not that a man does fit for the sisters if he never gifts his lady a roaring ditto. <laughs> ha 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 ha. Funny. <laughs> okay. Uh huh. There's the white wolf in preparation. What do you want? Wine. So they are making red wine, most probably. I don't know. Let's, uh, let's uh, move on. We wanted to do the main quest now. Otherwise we would outlevel it too much and it seems to be tagged already. Optional, read the bestiary to learn more about spotted whites. Oh, right, 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 right. Um, bestiary. 
have to go from here. I don't know the shortcut for all my tabs. Crafting books, characters, tutorial. <laughs> it's, it's the last one, as always. Which one would it be? Spectre? Hymns? Nine planets? Penitent? There's so much things here. So many. Um, it's not. Is it a vampire? We could read about Deadlock at some point, but uh, we talk to him. The caretaker. Oh, that was awesome. I have his trouble still. Oh, the memories. Necrophages? <gasps> yes. Oh, spotted whites. The best defense against spotted whites? Stay calm and leave them alone. Fragment of a treatise on spotted whites by Roderick Gilligan. Spotted whites are a subspecies of white, which the witchers drove to extinction. They were larger than their unspotted kin and owned their names to their numerous blotches and effusions. Spotted whites would most often dwell in derelict cemeteries and empty wilderness, yet at times took a living in abandoned human domiciles. There they would indulge in their greatest passion, creating brews from their own emissions. Ugh, yikes! When not disturbed, spotted whites would not act aggressively. If threatened, however, they became very dangerous indeed. In the colder month, or when faced with an unreasonable chill, they would slip into a state of lethargy, making them easy targets. Even, even during their active periods, it is said the witchers found a surefire way of besting them, based around careful casting of Yirden sign, or at least, so claims witcher lore. So Yirden? Igni? And necrophage oil. Okay, it's necrophages. Nice. Five points for reading. <laughs> That's nice. Move along. We stumbled upon its lair recently, on accident. Let's see if it's very far. It kinda is, right? Oh, not really. I mean, you, we could go to the hunting cottage. Uh, maybe from here now. But it's not that far. Mirkwood. Are you okay? In the forest, the mighty forest, the brown bear. <laughs> I know that song. No white wolf yet. They didn't sell it yet. Most probably. I mean, it didn't have a name until now. Oh, sorry. I steal your stuff, but I don't extinguish your candles. That's rude. Uh, there. Keep calm. Start no brawls. I think. Have we been here? I mean, yeah, otherwise the marker wouldn't be here. Who's that? Philibert von Witten. Four fingers. These are, I think, the Hansa guys that we can hunt down and liberate. I don't know where the others are. This is a very nice place. Oh, it's that village with the pub and the painter. <laughs> You've been here so many times. Do I need... No, I don't need to go to the smithy. We just came from there. Okay, okay. I think it's dead. Oh gosh. It's so creepy. And there are spoons everywhere already. Let's see. Ir Irden and Igni. Are they Irden, Gwen, Igni? 
so we go like that. Okay. Muscle memory has been trained. Aha. Uh -huh. Oh gosh. They run through me. So let's quen up for a second, shall we? <laughs> you should get out of here. Oh gosh. I wanted to quen up. Okay. Maybe I should eat something. Oh no, not what I wanted. But that helps maybe too. Yeah, they and they spit. What is it? Is it is it some kind of fire? Yeah, I think so, right? Some kind of hellfire. Varga's essence. I hope it's a good essence. There's still a lot of things out here. Let's do a Quinn. Yeah, one survived right there. Wanted to have the loot. And spoons. Spoons everywhere. I think I can set that stuff afire. Right? No, it's the... It's the... Come on. I don't want to trigger anything. The spoons are beating out some kind of rhythm. A message. Oh. Trying to tell me something. Do they? I don't know about that. They just make noises in the wind. shall sit and dine with you at your table. No spoon you have shall say to you. Never again shall you wish to spy your reflection in the mirror. Sounds like a curse, all right. Somebody's clearly obsessed. Regis mentioned the place might be cursed. Can't be a coincidence. Need to look around. Ah, oh, yeah, there. That's what we read. First, checking the outskirts. A soiled letter. Marlene, my dearest daughter, you have no idea the pain it causes a father to write these words. A father who must abandon his own child cease to be a father, and his heart shall never know comfort. Sadly, as a result of what has happened, I have no other choice. We, along with the rest of the household, must abandon our estate. It is because that curse took you from us, leaving in your stead a mindless, bloodthirsty creature. We shall go north to Kovir. And if you ever read this letter, which could only mean you have returned to human form, you are to look for us there. For my part, I can only promise each year I will send an envoy who will be tasked with checking on you, seeing if you are alive and, if so, in what form. Faith that you will once again be my beloved Marlene gives me the strength to live on. Perhaps the curse will not last forever. 
Perhaps someone will come along who can lift... I think who can lift this burden from you. Farewell. Okay. So it's Marlene. Oh, it has been Marlene? Okay. The pigsty. Need to search it thoroughly. Find a way to collect some white saliva. Oh, gosh. Oh, a spoon. White's obsessed. Real collector. Thoroughbred. So it is conscious somehow. Uh, there's more of the curse written down. Do we have to be careful? Mm, pretty ordinary. Maybe a little old. Do we have to be careful not to hit the spoons and make noise? Spoons incredible. The craftsmanship must have graced a rich man's table. Didn't we find a letter on a man who brought a golden spoon? With this precious? Oh, that's I think what we are searching for. So let's look around some more. I think it'll trigger something if we take that. I want to be prepared. Uh, what is that? A mirror. Smashed mirror. As if someone couldn't stand to look at themselves. Wasn't it in the curse that the creature cannot look in the mirror no more? Maybe because it's so ugly, no and not because there is no reflection. Whatever lives here treated that literally. Still searching for the right spoon. There's the spoon. Another spoon. Yep, just as normal as the last <gasps> one. Oh, look at that. There are dead people. I thought they left. A spoon key. A spoon key. Sophisticated crafting. Tag bears a description. White's a true collector. Maybe that's for the thing White's in... White's obsessed. Real collector. Thoroughbred. For the thing in the oven. None shall sit and dine with you at your table. No spoon you have shall say to you. Ever again shall you wish to spy your reflection ah, in the wish mirror. wish to spy. Okay, okay. So that's what it is so ugly that it cannot look at itself spoon pretty ordinary maybe a little old what is that there's another spoon woman's name scratched into this wooden spoon romantic what is that another letter Dear Master Levasier, I know you trek outlaws for pay. I have an unusual assignment for you. No doubt you wonder why I have drawn you out here and why we cannot meet in person. You see, in my present situation, any kind of meeting is very risky. Not so much for me as for the person with whom I meet, for I am afflicted by a curse or, as I hope and why I have turned to you, the side effects of medicine given to me some time ago by a herbalist. Soon after I visited this herbalist, she disappeared without trace. I desperately wish to understand my illness, so I wish to hire you to find her. When you do, learn as much from her as you can about the medicine she gave me. If my suffering is a result of her wickedness, then make her provide an antidote. I assure you I have ample wealth and will re reward you with no small part of it for your services. If it turns out my suffering is not the fault of the herbalist, please let her go. I will then have a different task for you, because this shall mean I am afflicted by a terrible curse which only the gods can cure. I believe it was cast upon me by a certain beggar who came by the manor while I was hosting a soiree for a few friends. If you can find that vagrant, I will pay you double. Sadly, all I remember of him is that he sold mirrors. <gasps> I'm aware this is not much aid for your hunt. 
Yet I trust in your considerable talents and wish you the best of luck. Marlene de Trastamar, the master of mirrors. <gasps> he casted the curse because she didn't let him in. Uh oh. She has no idea with whom she is dealing here. Spoon key note. This certifies the item up for auction. An antique spoon key forged at the Christofferson and Sons workshop in 1210 belongs to Smeagol Sirkins, owner of the pheasantry. Isn't that the guy we found, the dead guy? have anything to do with the curse none shall sit and dine with you at your table but it makes sense so she made them right on bit right off teeth all knocked out somebody tried ah. to force feed him broken neck indentation in the skull's lateral surface smacked in the head by something heavy <laughs> I'm looking behind me no claw or fang marks Probably choked to death. Oh, goodness. Okay. I think we have seen everything. Let's take whatever is in the oven. But if it's from Smeagol, how does that make sense? Oh, it's just a stained diary. So it's not... It doesn't belong to the key or it's not connected. For a few days now, I have been having dizzy spells. I've never experienced anything like this before. If it carries on, although I can't stand witchcraft and sorcery, I'll have to visit a herbalist. The dizziness had not gone away. First of all, it's been joined by pain, so strong that at times I cannot see. I've been to the herbalist. A repulsive old crone looked at me like she had seen a monster. She gave me some cursed mixture that I have to drink twice a day. It's not helping at all. Today, like every day, I looked in the mirror and I was lost for words. I usually check that I don't have any wrinkles or bags under my eyes, but today there are no wrinkles, but I'd rather that they're wear. I have hair growing on my breasts. It's horrible. It's got to be because of those damned herbs. I went to the herbalist to smash her face, but in her chambers, but her chambers were empty. She must have known what would happen to me and legged it. My family is starting to suspect something. Although I'm cutting the hair back, which is growing back faster and faster. I've tried to put the idea out of my head, but I can't hold it back any longer. Maybe it wasn't the herbs that have led to this, but a curse placed upon me by an old beggar whom I had to chase off one time. I have to find out. I want to hire someone who can find the herbalist. I cannot think, and it is getting hard to write. Loneliness. No family. Eat. I want to eat. Not a good spoon. Empty spoons. Nothing. Eat. It hurts. Poor girl. Realized she was changing into a monster. Recorded it in her diary. Poignant. Oh gosh. That's not good. Not good at all. So now we know how it happens. Which is helpful because if it was the master of mirrors, what could we do about it? Can we get up there? I don't see a letter or, any or anything. But we haven't found the last two. Oh, because, yeah, of course, because she's downstairs. Where else would she be? It's not creepy enough up here. Okay. So 
are more spoons. Actually, does seem like a white's lair. Bit atypical, but still. Cauldron should be somewhere around here. Cauldron. Another spoon. Yep, just as normal as the last one. Okay, we have seen all the normal spoons. There's the gold spoon. <laughs> that's the one. <laughs> well, that's awesome that we actually find it. Uh oh. White's obsessed. Real collector. Thoroughbred. Uh oh. I'd rather look at more spoons than go down there. Oh, there oh, is more. For. Why it's not particularly tidy. Nope, it's not. So then we go down there first. I don't know, maybe we can look around later. Is it the dead end? No. Yeah, maybe we should first look into the cauldron. We need to learn everything we can before we hunt it down, right? Okay. Oof. More spoon? What is that? Crater green mutagen. Why does she have spoon. that? Pretty ordinary. Maybe a little old. <laughs> Table set. White who lives here is getting ready for some sort of feast. White that lives here? Definitely afflicted by a curse. And it's been trying desperately to lift it. By collecting all the spoons. Another spoon. Yep, just as normal as the last one. Mm. Okay. What's she cooking? Cauldron's empty, unfortunately. We just need some brew. I'm afraid he won't get that. We have no choice but to hide and wait for the saliva glands and their bearer. Need a spot that'll let me observe the cauldron. Okay. So she's not here. <laughs> we can hide in the cupboard. That's that's good. In that case, I will go deeper. I just thought I may, might trigger something and I would regret it if I hadn't seen everything. Aha! Words of Wisdom on Beastly Curses. Monstrous Curses and their description. Curses that change a fellow into a monstrous creature have existed since the dawn of time. They have a variety of origins and a variety of effects. It normally happens that a mage or sorceress casts a curse and the spell changes the subject. It doesn't always happen straight away. Sometimes the person who has been cursed changes slowly, bit by bit. It also happens that a normal fellow can cast a curse. Someone whose conscience is clear and who has, gone and who has done good in their life. Such a person can acquire power and thus the aggrieved can please can place a curse on the evildoer. Such curses are strong and cannot be removed easily. Thus, everything by which human suffering is atoned is long-lasting and painful. Ooh. White's obsessed. Real collector. Thoroughbred. Collected so many spoons here. What? White's been a collector for years. That's crazy! Yeah, we are walking on spoons. Let's have a bit of light. Okay, let's hide. I guess. And then we fight a white. Haha. <laughs> So it's Axie. I hope we don't have to fight in here. Or we can lure it out at least. How would we do that though? Oh gosh.
try to lift? Tried to bring folk here. Can oh no! Sit at the table with you, right? No. Well, I'm gonna be your guest now. Your willing guest. If I'd known that, that's disgusting. <laughs> Just need a bit for Regis. Yeah, right. We still need the cellar. cute. Uh oh. Okay. Let's Let listen to that again. Right. Words of the curse were none shall sit, none shall and, dine sit and dine table. with you at no your table. You shall say to you. No spoon you have shall you say to you. Reflection in the mirror. Never again shall you see a reflection in the mirror. None Wait. And to get this right, words of the curse were None shall none sit and shall dine sit with you at your table, table but you're no sitting and dine there. Shall say to you, no spoon you have shall, you wish shall to say to you. In the mirror. It's the master of mirrors. It's cunning. Need to get this right. It's not the obvious words one. Of the curse were We sit and dine. dine with you at your table. No, no spoon, spoon you have. Never again shall you wish to spy your reflection in the mirror. So, do we need to use the spoons or not here using the spoons? I mean, she obvi obviously tried the spoons, even with her unwilling guests. I don't know what that should would do. Swapping spoons? Eat using the spoons? No spoons? Oh gosh, <laughs> I'm nervous. Right. No spoon you have shall say to you. No spoon you have shall say to you. Never again shall you wish to spy your reflection in the mirror. I mean, he's, he wishes that upon her. Or that's part of the curse. So I think we... Hmm. I think we eat not using spoons. Because that would be the obvious. Swapping spoons. What would that do? Oh gosh, I'm nervous. We can't use spoons. No, that won't work. You've been looking for a spoon that would feed you, but there's no such spoon. We need to eat without spoons. Slurp it down. Kind of cute. Slurp and slurp. <laughs> it's disgusting. I knew it. Open your eyes. You need to see your likeness. Oh. Oh. Expected. Need to see what happened to the white. Okay. It'd be hard to find given its stench. It's stinking along here. There was blue dust emanating 
from it. Where did it go? To the oven? No, outside. Uh oh. Took a bath? No, it didn't. Uh oh. Do we have time for that? I mean, you have to. Come on, quick. Ah, stench is still there. I'd rather ready a Quinn. <gasps> there she's. Oh, Marlene! And she's blue. Shh, easy. Not gonna hurt you. She's an old woman. Eat. I, I must eat. She aged. Someplace safe. Oh. We took her home? So I took her by the hand and led her here. Seemed the only sensible place for her. No you way. did the right thing, sir. She should recover quickly here. Don't worry, sir. I shall see to everything. She is safe here and in good hands. She'll soon be back on her feet. Might actually take a while. She hadn't eaten anything in over a hundred years when I found her. Horrid. Whatever brought this about? Told me her story on the way here. Her name's Marlena. She was once the very beautiful and proud heiress to the Trastamara estate. One evening, when she was holding a banquet for friends, a beggar came to her gate seeking alms. He had a bowl and a spoon with him. He sat outside her fence and waited. I've heard of the custom, an ancient rite of hospitality that obliges one to give food and drink to such a guest lest he depart hungry. To neglect the custom is to bring great misfortune down upon oneself. Marlena didn't care a whit for the old customs. She drove the man off, saying she'd rather feed the leftovers from her feast to her dogs than to give the beggar anything. The beggar then broke his spoon, cast a curse. She was beautiful, so he said she'd never wish to look at herself in the mirror again. Since she adored feasts, he swore no one would ever wish to sit and dine with her. And as she even refused him the crumbs from her table, he swore she'd never find a spoon in the world that would sate her hunger. A harsh punishment. I imagine lifting the curse was hardly simple. Mm. Curses are tricky. They play on irony. Always gotta figure out what the catch is. Marlena had spent decades looking for a way to lift it. Transformed into a white, she stole spoons and lured folk into her home, trying each time to get them to dine with her. Didn't work. So what did? Someone had to sit down and share a meal with her, of their own free will. They had to eat without using spoons and make her look at her reflection. That's it? That was all it required? The simplest solutions are sometimes the last that come to mind. Besides, when you're a white, it's pretty damn hard to find willing human company for a feast. I imagine so. But, most importantly, it is now over. Please, don't worry. She will be in good hands here. Will she occupy the guest room? Thanks. Gotta get back to my business now. See you soon. He's such a good guy. Our BB. Dang. 
Now we have company here. Can we collect more people? Mm. Mm. Tasty. Mm. So mm. wonderful. That's awesome. Maybe give her a bath. <laughs> she stinks. Although we don't have the trail of, of stink no more. <laughs> of stink. Well, that was pretty awesome. She has a whole kitchen full of food because we don't need anything anyways. I mean, our people need the food too. So she cannot eat everything. So, I think we go and report back to Riches. But we do that the quick way. What a cool quest. And I'm pretty sure when I played that the first time, I don't know, five years ago, um, not that I would remember much of it, but I'm pretty sure I didn't solve that that curse. Because I don't remember her at all. Which means nothing. I don't remember much anyways. Okay. Where's he at? At least it's daytime. Oh, chapel is that way. I think he's directly underneath me, right? Oh no. Oh, he does his teleportation game, yeah. your friend's hand will make for a nice broth. Hmm. You've clearly honed your sense of humor. But we are not cannibals, Geralt. I took a fragment of tissue from the hand. It will suffice to prepare some residence. What did you do with the rest? I cremated it, with our Codex commands. Raven told me you'd acquired the necessary ingredients. <laughs> Pretty helpful creatures, calling them often. I try not to overdo it. But they can be so useful, as they were now, when I merely needed to be sure I could arrive in time should things go sour. Managed to find a loan, but thanks for the thought. Gonna need much longer to finish brewing resonance? Mentioned a last ingredient, too. What about that? That, I fear, might prove troublesome. You see, to use the concoction to summon the memories of one, the solution must contain the blood of another specimen of the same species. Shouldn't be a problem. I happen to know a higher vampire who should be willing to help, right, Regis? It's not that simple, I'm afraid. While you were away, I tried my damnedest to identify a replacement, but, alas, none such exists. Not sure I understand what the problem is. Can't we just draw some of your blood? The blood must be in an agitated state. As I'm certain you know, higher vampires can change their corporeal shell. As our flesh changes, so does our blood's chemical composition. To make a long story short, I shall need to induce in myself a state of strong psychokinetic arousal. In brief, madness, rabidity. And that stands to be very, very dangerous. Okay. Dangerous? Why? I mean, you'll still be you, right? True. But I should be highly agitated, in a state of fury. You know better than I that fury cannot be controlled. If you've ever seen an enraged vampire, you know very well that all who find themselves nearby will be in grave danger. How will we handle that? I'd rather not have you lunge at me, claws extended. That makes two of us. But worry not. I've thought it through very thoroughly. Details to follow soon. All right. So what do you want to do? We shall visit Tesham Mudna, an ancient vampire estate. There, we will find cages suspended in the air. I will enter one, be confined. You will lure beasts there. Beasts you will then kill. The bloodletting should prove profuse. Abundant enough so that the blood scent will drive me mad. Wild. Okay. 
um, if we choose that option, do we go there straight away? Because I don't want to do that. Expedition starting to sound dangerous. Think I better prepare. I understand completely. Do tell me when you're ready to set off. Yeah, yeah. We would set off. Okay. Very well. Very good. I do like that quest more and more. It's awesome. So, I end the episode here. And we'll see in the next episode how that will work out. Um, although I don't like the sound of it to cage him in. That doesn't sound right. But uh, it was his will. What is his will? So, of course, we'll do it. But uh, not now. Not now. I think in the next episode... What is that? Oh, it's still pretty low level though. Because I think we might do another side quest maybe. Mm, or another treasure hunt. I mean, we could finish off the Manticore because we ran into those anyways. And uh, yeah, that would be the next. Oh, that will be awesome. There are archaeologists involved. <laughs> Love that. So yeah, there's a lot of stuff to do. So maybe we keep our pattern to do the main quest or one part of the main quest and some side quests and some new gear and then we continue. But we'll see. I don't know yet. So thank you so so much for watching this one. Have a wonderful and adventurous day and uh, goodbye.